Hello world, welcome to lesson one, and today we're going to be writing our very first program. Now before we begin, make sure you have watched lesson zero. Lesson zero shows you how to install the IDE that we're going to be using, the Integrated Development Environment. If you already have an IDE, um, you can continue on, but it might be easier to follow along using the same one that I am. So now let's get started here so first click on this little uh, window icon then we're going to click on all programs now scroll down until you see Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 Express then you're going to click on Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express and this should come up here now uh, these right here you shouldn't see these here under recent projects here there should be empty if um, this is your first time opening it then next we're, what we're going to do we're going to click on file we're going to click on new we're going to click on project here and you may have all these different choices here you'll have general you'll have 132 you'll have CLR and different options come up as you click on different ones, but if you click on the Visual C++, all three options come up and they're all mixed together here. But um, just go ahead and click on General, click on the Empty Project, now name it something. I'm going to call mine First Program. Now before you click OK, click on the Browse here and you can pick a file location. You can use the default file location here, but I'm going to change mine to an external hard drive. And um, I'm going to um, put mine in C++ Lessons. And you can pick a file. You can pick a place to save your project. And I'm going to select there. Okay, so I already had gave mine a name and I already gave it a location here. So if you already have a location you want, go ahead and click OK. So I have an empty project, and all I have is this just blue screen here. And we have um, these four folders here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to click left click on the source files, and then right click on it. Then we click on add. And we click on new item. Then we're going to click on the C++ file.cpp. We're going to call it something. We're going to call it main. <clears throat> now we have a, a, a .cpp file that comes up. Now this should all be pretty foreign to you if you've never programmed before. That's okay. Just uh, follow along a little bit more, and then I'll explain things here. So what you just learned how to do was open a project. Now this is going to be pretty common here. This is how we're going to be opening projects. We're going to be opening um, blank projects, empty projects, for uh, for a very long time here until we get better at it. We can we'll be opening up new projects here. All right, so. Since this is our first program here, just type in exactly what I'm going to be typing in here. And let me make this bigger here so you can see it. So just type in everything word for word. Notice that certain words change colors when you type them in here. <clears throat> okay so this should this is going to be our first code here now just to get started here just type in exactly what I have here now uh I'm going to be 
explaining to you what each piece does here. So first right here, now that we have this typed up here, go ahead and click this little green button here. Yeah, it's like a green arrow pointing right. It's a green triangle. And when you highlight it, it's, it says start debugging here. So go ahead and click it. It looks like a play button. We run it. And this is our first program. And it's a Hello World program. A lot of um, instructional books will use Hello World as their program for some reason. Okay. <clears throat> so now when we when we click debug here, what this does here, the compiler will turn this, turn all this uh, code here that we've written here into machine language. Now basically machine language is just basically a bunch of zeros and ones. You know, it's and they each tell the computer to do something that's uh, just basically instructions for the computer. It translates it into that here. And that's how the, the old programs used to be. Okay. So when we hit debug here, the compiler will read one line at a time here. So when we hit debug here, the first thing it's going to do is the compiler, which is this software that we installed, is going to build the project, and then it's going to execute it. So basically when it builds here, it's going to read one piece of code at a time here. One line at a time. And then it turns it into an uh, executable file here. So right here, this, these first two lines here, we're going to ignore for right now, but they have to be there throughout the remainder of our programs here. Then when it reads this next line here, we're also going to ignore this. This is called the functions here. We'll get into the functions later on here. But right now, um, I'm going to hold off. Because uh, if I started explaining these three lines here, uh, it would be more confusing than what it is right now here. So we're only going to learn two things here. We're going to learn this line of code here and this one here. This will also be ignored. And these braces here, they're going to have to be there as well. So basically what I just told you is that everything's just going to have to be there here, which is not too helpful right now. But I want to do I do want to explain these first two lines here. So this first one here is called the C out statement. It stands for console output. So when we run this here, the compiler is going to read these here, but when it comes across here, it's going to print this to the screen here. Now the syntax for this is going to be C out. Then we're going to need these two less than signs here. This is called the um, insertion operator. That's just that just has to be there here. Then next here we're going to put text in these quotes here. So when we run this here, anything anything that's going to be written in quotes here is going to be printed to this little console here. This is called the console window. So we can put in anything we want in here. Almost anything. And it'll print that to the screen. And notice it doesn't print into the quotes here. And uh, right here, we'll end it in quotes. So everything inside these quotes here is going to be printed to the screen. Notice that it changes colors. It turns into like a maroon color or a brown color when we uh, put it in quotes here. Finally, we have a semicolon here. At the very end, we have a semicolon. Everything that ends with a semicolon here is going to be considered a program statement here. Notice that we have three program statements inside this main function here. And like as I said before, we're not going to worry about anything up here. This is a program statement. But just uh, ignore these for right now. And um, that's the code here. So this first piece of code here will print something to the screen. So that's all that's good for. This next one here pauses the program here. Now let me show you what I mean by that. Let me delete this here and I'm going to run it. What happens is this black box came up immediately then it disappeared. Well why? Because we never told the program to stop here. Now let me go over this. this basically this return statement here terminates the program here. 
And I'm going to leave it like that here, and we'll learn about the return statements later on. And I promise to explain every code here, just not all at the same time here. So we're only going to learn two things here. CIN.GET. Basically, this will just pause the program here. So what happens is the compiler, the program is running through this code here. It ex executed this statement here, and then it executes this here. Now the program is stuck here, and it's waiting for me, which is the user, to press enter. Now when I press enter, it'll execute the rest of the code. In this case, it happens to be the return statement. So that's what we know so far about um, uh, programming here. We have two statements here. Now this shouldn't make sense here. So if this is completely foreign, do not worry about it. Um, things, go ahead and watch the next video. If you have this written here, and, and if only these two make sense here, because things will start to fall into place as we continue on here. So go ahead and watch the next lesson here. If you're having problems here, watch the extended video here. Now, um, you should, I recommend watching the extended video anyway here. Basically what the extended video does is it explains to you the problems if you couldn't get this to run here. We might have to change a few settings here, or maybe you accidentally closed this here, and you can't figure out how to get it back up. And it'll also go over build errors here. For instance, if I forget to put the semicolon here, I'll press play. It'll say there were build errors. You will get this all the time. If you're brand new to the programming, you'll see this all the time. Go ahead and it's going to ask if you want to build the last successful build. Just You normally want to hit no. Now, if you're, ex if you're an experienced programmer, you'll still get them a lot. I still get them a lot when I got all this stuff going on here. And that just lets you know that something's going on here. Now to wrap this lesson up here, so here's our first program. Hello world. I'm going to put an exclamation mark. Make it a little different. And it prints this out to the screen here. Now let me delete this here. So throughout the remaining of the tutorials here, or the next couple tutorials here, ignore all this stuff here, but keep in mind that it does have to be in our program here, and only focus on the stuff that we're going to be typing inside this little main function here. These braces correspond to the main function here, and basically just ignore these here until I bring them up. Okay? So we're going to ignore these first two here, we're going to ignore the main function, and we're going to ignore the return statement, but they're going to have to be there in the next program, in our programs here. And everything will be explained line by line. So go on and watch the extended video to come across the build errors. And then go on ahead and watch the, the next lesson here. So you can click up here on these top corners here to proceed to the next lesson or the extended video. And I'm also going to be posting up previous lessons here throughout the remaining of the tutorial. So I hope this is a good start. I hope your program was able to run here. Now if I just press play here, we get the black box and it goes away. So notice that we don't get build errors and it uh, does actually run here. So this is just the minimum things that we need to make our program run for now. So I hope this was helpful and you can go on and watch one of the next videos.